Okay, thank you. Uh, so before I know you guys are eager to see how we deploy Snowflake Cortex on our infrastructure, but I want to dive in on how our business is, uh, use data and operates with data because that's important. Because for to me, uh, Snowflake features and AI itself maybe have different applications depending on your company or challenges or even your uh, whole company culture, right? Uh, so let me give some uh, data about our uh, Azul landscape, over 100 business units. We have operation teams that are managing the fleet, the passengers, we have the call center team that is entering contact with our customers, we have even a private corporate university. Uh, so that is a lot of business uh, units here in Azul. Roughly 9% of the data is already inside the Snowflake, so we don't have big data silos, we don't have data silos at all because Snowflake came to our company to break the silos and it's pretty efficient at doing so. Every business unit is safe to say that runs some kind of analytical load inside Snowflake. So everyone is scurrying data, uh, some, some small data, some small loads, another larger one, so everyone is pulling data from Snowflake, Snowflake right? Okay, so how is the day-to-day -day of a business unit in Zo? Uh, let's maybe you are an agent from the operational team that wants to know how are the cancellations are going to be through the day, or how many cancellations or flight cancellations were in the Port of Rio de Janeiro on the past weeks. So you go to your business analyst, and this business analyst is a part of the business unit. It needs to know the inside out of the business, all the business rules, everything of the business as a whole. So you go to your business analyst and ask for a report or a dashboard or, some, or something like that and then analytics goes, uh, jump right onto it and start to develop uh, these dashboards. And he goes, uh, he builds the queries, he builds the infrastructure and so on, and he deploys it and goes back to the business units and say, okay, here is your report, here's your dashboard. Usually the business units say, okay, great, uh, this gives him some insight, but I need now to see the cancellations across uh, Brazilian regions like South, Southeast and Northeast, as Rafael put it, uh, we have, uh, continental uh, 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 weather variations in Brazil, so it's hard to deal with these factors here. Uh, that usually uh, sometimes scrap the analysis because the dashboard, the business analyst needs to go back to the drawing table to redo some of the analysis. And these reports that are bound on some of the business uh, areas, rules or preset of standards, uh, normally when this, these rules change, it, it starts invalidating the report or the work done uh, and basically the analyst needs to do some part of, of it. So, and that work just keeps on going because the business keeps evolving and you need to uh, ask new questions, you need to new insights and so on. So changing the scope analysis may invalidate the report, right? And this go and uh, this go forth and on uh, usually takes one or two weeks to be deployed. So. Uh, to change a dashboard, to change a report, takes a week or two uh, to develop, test it, and push to production. And for a company as dynamic as ours, um, this is not great, right? Uh, and we have something, uh, I, I said that we don't have uh, data silos, but we have like semantic silos. Because everyone is seeing the same data, they're seeing the same passengers, they're seeing the same flights, they're seeing uh, the same data points, but they're getting the same meaning of the data. They're seeing, uh, for example, the operation team is going to cancel two flights today. They know the impact of the revenue in that. They know uh, how many of the customers on these flights are going to go to the call center. Usually they don't have this perspective because they see the data of call center, but they can give a meaning to it, right? And once again, deploying dashboards and spreadsheets and so on outside the Snowflake environment is costly for us. Uh, we have a bunch of tools to get lineage from it to see how our data ec ecosystem is built, but we here at the zoo like uh, the clothes inside Snowflake operating as close as the core as possible, right? And sometimes these spreadsheets uh, and files, they don't have versioning or lineage at all, and that's a big problem for us. So once again, everybody's pooling the same data, but they're not giving the same meaning to the data, and that's troublesome, right? Okay, the solution. Right now, uh, Cortex came in the format of a chat for us. So you basically, you basically interacting with the chat, interacting, making questions to the chat, uh, and, it, this, it, and this chat nourishes the data collaboration across the company because the data analysts, as I'm going to mention, are now building the semantic layer of the solution. They are worried of mapping all the tables they're using 
all the, the schemas they are, they, are, they are building. And business units can interact with their data using uh, natural language. They don't need to know SQL to get insights. So they basically got a 24-7 business analyst with them. Uh, and analysts and business units can reduce the lead time of the report as a whole because you're just asking for new data and the Cortex is already answering based on your structured data, right? So how are you changing uh, the landscape of how we do the things? Uh, all the data analysts are now focusing on building the semantic layer. They are used to it because they know the tables and they know the database they are used to work on the, the, the past years. So they're just now plugging uh, these tables to Cortex and leveraging uh, this data. And this can be used across the company as a whole. And the operation teams, for example, can build the, the semantic layer upon the operation data. And the revenue team can know uh, what the operation team is looking for as well as call center. Let me give you an example. And all the examples here that I'm giving today are real business challenge that we face on a day-to-day basis, right? So for example, I'm, I'm, seizing, uh, I'm sizing our call center workforce for the month. I need to know how many flights are going to be on the next month, how many uh, can planning cancellations I'm going to have, how many baggages, how many upgrades, how many uh, packages I sold of uh, flights and hotels and so on. So asking these questions, the call center manager can access data from the operation teams, from the revenue teams, and from the other areas of the company. Uh, and once deployed, uh, Cortex has minimal, I'm not going to say to no support, there is some support on it, uh, but there is low to minimal support on it because if you have a good data engineering team uh, that ensure the data running underside the Cortex is there, is of quality, and is uh, refreshed and is trustworthy, there is no problem in that. You just need to keep the data flowing, right? Uh, and eventual deployments uh, usually take two to three days, business days, to be deployed, and there's a uh, big uh, reduce in uh, lead time on analysis, right? So we tested it, it's a uh, real, real deployment time right there. So uh, these are some of the interactions we've done with Cortex. Uh, for example, how many flights, delay flights are today? How many pilots are operating at air aircraft today? We operate like five or six different aircrafts. Uh, that's a pretty complex environment. Who is on medical leave? How many pieces of baggage uh, I'm shipping today? Uh, we have an uh, interesting case uh, three weeks prior to the summit here where a man uh, maintenance manager came to us and asked about some uh, aircraft items. He said that he had the dashboard, he had analysis on, as a whole, as a bunch of parts, but he needed specific information on three parts. Uh, let's mention part A, B, and C. And he said, okay, you can help us, uh, you can help me build a dashboard on it or build some report, maybe a spreadsheet. And say, okay, I give you a chat to talk to your data. So you run to, to where his data was and build a semantic layer upon three or four tables that he, where this information was used. Uh, and we ship to him uh, this chat where he can ask for the data. So not only he got uh, answers for the three items that he was working, but he, was, uh, he loved the solution because he started asking, okay, how many I got on stock? What's the average price on, this, on these items across the, the past month? Uh, uh, who are my suppliers? What's uh, the quantity that I bought on the last month? So it's endless uh, opportunity for the, the manager, right? Uh, okay? Oh, so that's how we actually deploy Cortex uh, inside Snowflake. So I'm going to start on the bottom right. I'll start with the analysts. The analysts were used to make reports, dashboards, and work with the data. So they're used to the database, the schemas, and the tables, right? Uh, but now they are building the semantic layer, and they're just looking to their business units. They don't need to know what are the tables operation is using or what the tables other areas are using. They, are for, they just need to focus on their data. So you had, had a bunch of ways uh, of building the semantic layer. You can use a code editor, it's a YAML file basically, but Snowflake has a great tool on their GitHub repository, that's the semantic model builder. If you guys are planning to deploy something in Cortex that use semantic layer, I highly encourage you guys to check this model because it's a wonderful tool. You just, uh, it just connects your data, you can test locally, you can deploy it, you can uh, uh, change it very easily. We, we are using it now, it's great. So, after the analysis, okay, these tables are uh, good, the semantic model is okay, 
uh, let's push it to production, right? So we put the semantic model in a repository, in a Git repository, where we can get the lineage and the versioning. Because when you are using uh, AI and LLMs as such, you need to version everything that's coming inside the model. You need to know where the data is coming from. You have to have a full uh, lineage of it, because it's important, right? So when this code or this YAML file lands there on the repository, uh, it, it, it's uh, where the things get interesting. interesting. Uh, it triggers Snowflake Notebook. This Snowflake Notebook uh, basically uh, tests uh, the semantic model in two edges. The first edge is against a federated data. This data you know to be true. For example, how many flights were yesterday? Roughly 1,000 flights. How many passengers we, we transported? How many pieces of baggage uh, we, we transport? And things like that. And the model needs to answer around these values. For example, if it uh, answers like there was 100 uh, flights yesterday, we know there's something wrong with uh, the semantic layer. And this triggers an alert. And someone needs to look on the deployment they were trying to do. right? And this is the first edge. The second edge here are uh, some uh, border testing criteria. For example, uh, how many elephants we shipped yesterday? We don't ship the elephants, so it's supposed to be none. How many passengers on the flight zero? We don't have a flight zero, so it's supposed to be none. And these testing criteria ensure that the model uh, is uh, working inside the guardrails it's supposed to be, right? And now of this data that's been generated through the deployment, uh, or development, deployment, uh, and chat interactions are saved in a database inside Snowflake that is, we call the control hub. There is a, a metadata repository where engineers of the solution can see how the application is behaving, to inquire about the metrics, and to see if everything is running as accordingly. And we have some integration with Power Automate to send alerts across the organization. For example, let's say uh, some fault uh, model goes uh, push into production. That wasn't supposed to happen, but okay, that's happened. Uh, uh, there is alert sent to the business units. Okay, uh, this chat may be unavailable. Uh, hold back that we fix things uh, and we can make available to you again because it's important to maintain contact with the business units that are using the application. Uh, and the last part here on the application side. Uh, is where the business units analysts are uh, interacting with data through Streamlit. Uh, they're asking the questions and getting answers for it. And not just uh, the table and the SQL, the SQL code, but graphs as well. Uh, that's a great game changer because the business units love graphs, love to see uh, trends and so on. And the analysts can, and the context analyst chat can give them this uh, analysis right away, right? Uh, let's wrap up here, guys. Uh, the conclusions. Uh, while this solution is hosted inside Snowflake, entirely inside Snowflake, it's easier to be scaled, right? Uh, it's just like two or three clicks away to scale the whole operation, and you can get better than that. Uh, we, increase, uh, we reduce the lead time on analysis because you're just talking to the chat. If you want to change the scope of the analysis, if you want to change the scope of the report, it's easier. You just need to ask different questions. Uh, we reduce costs by recycling dashboards that were uh, replaced by analysts, so there are a bunch of dashboards that the analysts can easily replace, so we slice down these uh, dashboard costs. Uh, the model, uh, as we talk, can provide on-demand metrics and answers. It's just a business, 24-7 uh, business analyst, and business areas can share the insights via the semantic models without uh, needing to actively doing so. Uh, for example, I am an analyst from the revenue team. I just need to focus on my revenue data and build it and push it to production and the rev or the operation team can leverage from my data just looking at my semantic model. So data uh, can be uh, distributed across the organization just by analysts focus on their own semantic model. So I think that's it. Thank you all for your time.